because you are king of kings, our lord of lord, our bomb in Gilead. You all, the above plus. Or we thank just want to say thank you. We honor you for who you are, for you're truly worthy, Lord, for the things that you have done. Lord, we thank, thank you, you uh, for, uh, for the prayer requests, those that are known and unknown. Um, I personally want to thank you, Lord, for bringing our son out of uh, yeah. surgery. And I thank you for sparing his life, thank Lord. You. Once again, you can't. Lord, if you don't do nothing else, thank you've done you. enough. Lord, thank you for our, our, our church as a whole. We thank you for our leadership, Lord. We thank you for the guidance. We thank you, Lord, for the first family for supplying their needs. Lord, on tonight, we ask that you come in, <clears throat> touch hearts that have their heads bowed down, those that don't know where their meals, next meals are coming for, from. But Lord, you know, you're able to make a way. You're able to touch hearts, open up doors in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you in advance thank you, for Lord. feeding uh, the nation, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you touch the epidemic that's going around now, Lord. Lord, we ask that you uh, give those that don't have a mind and know who you are, open up doors, Lord. Let a saint run into them and show them and tell them what a great and mighty God you are. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. there is so much to be thankful for. We thank you for in advance for healing our nation. Lord, let us take heed for the things that we know that we need to do in order to get rid of this epidemic. Thank you. Bless us to be obedient uh, to the leaders. And we ask that you bless the leaders of this nation. Thank Guide them, Lord. Uh, because they don't know what way to turn or, or what to tell us. But you know. Because this is your doing, Lord. And we know, Lord Jesus, that we shall fear not what man can do unto us. The Lord uh, bless the uh, the medical field. Uh, download in them the things that they need to uh, get a vaccine that may not be harmful Jesus. to us with no side in effects. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. hallelujah. We that thank you for hospitals and healing. And delivering and setting free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. We, just, we just praise you through all things. And you, uh, we'll forever give you the praise because worthy is a Lamb of God. Thank Hallelujah. You, Jesus. Uh, bless Lord those, Lord Jesus, don't know you. Bless them to be saved before it's too late. Bless you, the black backsliders to touch their hearts, their minds. Uh, show them, Lord, that your way is the best way. Thank you. There's no running from it. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we'll give you these and all thy many praises for the things you've done and the things that you're about to do in advance. Thank you, Thank you God. You, there's none other like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for, thank you. for just knowing who you are, Lord. Thank hallelujah, you. hallelujah. Thank Bless you, each and every ear that's uh, in the sound of my voice, in the Thank sound you, of the pastor's voice. Bless the pastors on tonight, the Thank teachings. You, uh, you, give them the words to say that might be Thank edifying you, to you and to our ears and our hearts that we might do Thank unto you. you. Um, the Lord, before it's everlasting too late, we Thank love you, you and praise you. 
in the master name of Jesus. All of the saints say, Amen. 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 Thank God. I say, I give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank God. Well, we're just uh, are so honored to just be in your fellowship once again. Thank you for that beautiful prayer, uh, Evangelist. I just felt that like we need to wait on you now. Now I see why. Um, this section, this next section, we're going to open up. Um, and what we're going to do is here in this, because uh, we can take a little more time on Thursday nights. Uh, on Sunday mornings, we're bumping up against the... Um, the 1130 service when we start so we don't have the kind of liberty we have tonight but we're going to take our time tonight um and what we want to do is i want to this this is going to be a time of sharing i want to take maybe 10 11 minutes so um uh, whatever the saints want to share and the floor is open to anybody to share testimonies if you got a song on your heart you can sing it it's, uh, it's kind of like the old-fashioned testimony service let's 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 enjoy the fellowship dimension here um to the extent that the lord would would have it so, um, so the floor is open. I'll start. Grace and I will start. Uh, but it's a time to share. If you have a script you want to read, or a um, or a uh, thought you want to share, um, uh, you can do it th at this time. So we'll start with uh, Brother Sherman. He's going to read us a scripture. And if you have an expectation, please give it, uh, Brother Tyler. And then Grace and I have a testimony we want to share. And then we'll open up the floor if anybody else wants to share a thought or something they you know that hit them this week or some angle about this thing, maybe the Lord gave you some insights you want to share it with everybody. So we're going to have a time, you know, 10, 11, 12 minutes of sharing, uh, beginning with uh, Brother Tyler. Well, well, uh, well, so, uh, and um, so somebody needs to go on mute, I think. I don't know who it is. But, um, but, uh, uh, but Brother Tyler, if you would go ahead and uh, start us with the scripture and any exhortation, and we're going to open the floor up. And uh, um, then Grace and I will follow you with our testimony, and we'll open up for anybody else's. I'm going to read from Psalms, the 24th chapter. The mm -hmm. earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? He that have a clean hands and a pure yeah. heart, Delicious line. Up his soul unto vanity, nor yes. swarm deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Salah. Amen. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Salah. Just sometimes I think we need to be reminded just how great God is. That's it. Short and sweet tonight. Could they hear you? Yeah, I think so. I'm here. Okay. Amen. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, Brother Tyler. Awesome. Awesome scripture. And we do, um, well, we do have to stop and recognize, even in this, we have to see God's hand. And uh, Pastor Daryl and I were talking uh, recently about the good things that come out of this. We don't thank, you know, God for coronavirus, but we thank God in <laughs> In coronavirus and all things give thanks in all things give thanks uh, there's actually a verse that says for all things give thanks but if you look at the greek it's the same word for in and uh and being consistent i truly believe that in everything give thanks and, you know if, I, if my dog get you know hit across the road i don't give thanks i don't give god thanks for that but in that thing i give god thanks so we were talking about um and that's just the the, the, the greek technical text is in everything give god thanks even though you might see in some versions for uh, certainly, you know, if somebody love dies, you don't thank God for that. But in that thing, you still offer thanks because he has a, he has a purpose even in that. Uh, Jesus said, not a sparrow falls to the ground apart from your father. So how much more human life than, than one of his saints? But anyway, so I was thinking uh, today, uh, just some losses. I, I, I was a tracking, um, and after I finished this testimony, I want the floor open. Uh, we're going to this fellowship tonight and just enjoy each other. So, and, and uh, this is Thursday night. So, 
Um, I know I don't have anywhere to go, <laughs> so so I hope we have a long term. But uh, but Pastor Dale's not long on, on the uh, on the study. But have a God lead tonight. But after I finish, I want to open up the floor for other testimonies and just sharing and just for us to hug each other digitally, so to speak. But um, yeah, I was um, just um, I was looking I was looking at a map before this thing got big. And uh, because we were thinking about taking a trip to the Grand Canyon uh, back in uh, February, March, March, before it got really big. And so uh, the, the first case had hit in um, Washington and California. So I looked at a map and it says, here are the states that have at least one case of coronavirus. And I saw that it was in California and Washington and New York and uh, maybe New Jersey. And I said, OK, let me just keep an eye on this thing as we get close to this trip. And then the next day I looked and then it hit. Uh, Utah and uh, Nevada, and then it hit uh, uh, Virginia. And, and, and then as I looked at day by day, I looked every day for about uh, a week, and it was like a monster movie. The thing was just marching closer and closer to us. And then one day I looked and it hit New Mexico. So all the states that it hit were turning white on my map. All the other states were black. And I looked, and, and California was black, and Washington was black. And now you t- I said, this thing is heading toward Oklahoma. I feel like a monster movie. It's coming right to Oklahoma. And then sure enough, it got in Texas, and then it got in New Mexico, and then it got in uh, Kansas or someplace, in Arkansas. And I said, I said, man, it's like it's on us now. And then sure enough, the next time I looked, the map was in uh, Oklahoma was white because it had landed in Tulsa. And I was like, wow. And I said, well, how close will, will it come to my door is the next question. Now it's here. And, and I felt like I was in a, in a, in a horror movie waiting for the, you know, the monster to come. And uh, in the middle of all that, the thing that sustained me was my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Lord knew, knows our addresses. And, 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 and he can, in his sovereignty, he can say, uh, you know, 1619 Cloverfield Avenue, that disease shall not hit that address. And, and, and I've even asked the Lord, Lord, you, you know, as the, the way you put the, 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 the blood on the doorpost and you recognize that, just, just let the blood be on the doorpost, you know, for us and for our saints. And, and I begin to pray for different families. If you're listening, you probably got your name called out. <laughs> Uh, I just went through, and uh, God is able. So, um, uh, and, but we have to have the attitude of, of, of the three Hebrew boys. We know God is able, but if not, if not, if not, if we have to go through that uh, thing, he's still worthy, he's still God, he's still able. The, the three Hebrew boys told the king, but God can deliver us from your fire, but if not, we still won't give anybody but him the praise. And so, uh, 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 so as I looked to see how close it was coming to us, and I'll constantly call our relatives. Sure enough, uh, you know, we had some in the family uh, in New Orleans. Looks like that's going to be okay. And the nephew. And then this week, Grace and I got word that uh, a good friend of ours from Tallahassee had contracted it and died. And he was fairly young, but by my standards, 50 years old. Um, uh, any, 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 any person Grace's age or younger is young. And so uh, he's <laughs> he's uh, was 50 years old and died. Very good friend of us, gospel singer. Some of y'all know him, Troy Snead, uh, gospel recording artist. Uh, got it and died. And then uh, this uh, just today, we found out another friend of ours, uh, friend uh, that actually friend of Williams and Graces that we played basketball with. Very healthy guy. He caught a heart attack and died this week. And so. Um, you think about uh, you know, how gracious God has been to us. And the fact that we're on this broadcast means that God saw fit for us to live. So I just give God uh, a special thanks today. But what I want us to do in our prayers is just remember those who, who didn't make it through unscathed. Some of us, I believe, before God will make it through this thing and, and we'll, we'll still have all our family members and all our friends and you know, hopefully, you know, just, just a, a full circle. And others of us, we don't necessarily know who they are. May come through this thing and, and look back, and you know you've lost somebody or something. Um, some of us will leave this life with, with, with a few less body parts than we can. Um, God knows, but in everything, in everything, let us give thanks. So even in this, it's just so good to be connected to God and to have this confidence that if this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have another building not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And uh, as Pastor Dale has touched on the Hebrews, uh, because Jesus became flesh and took part of death and became a high priest, the Bible says in Hebrews, he is able to save to the uttermost mm-hmm. those who have fled to God for refuge in him. So I, I, in, in everything, I want us to continue to give thanks and continue to recognize that it doesn't get so deep. You know, there's a song that says, hell hath no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. 
So let's continue to lift each other up in prayer. So that's our testimony. We, we had two, we lost two friends in the last two weeks, but God is still faithful. And we're here, and by the help and grace of God, we continue. So at this time, I'd like to open the floor up. Uh, I don't know if somebody wants to sing a song or give a testimony or something the Lord laid on your heart. But we're going to take another few minutes here and, and just open the floor up. Anybody else who wants to share a scripture, share a testimony, share a song, share a thought uh, and for the next few minutes till the floor is open, whosoever will. Um, I just wanted to read a, a Bible verse. Certainly, go ahead. And it's Psalm 16 and 16, 1. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. That scripture Amen. was given to me, so Amen. I have to share it. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to take that one, too. Amen. Others. It's not necessary, but whosoever will. All right, I'm gonna wait another 20 seconds for those who are shy about this to do it, and then we'll turn it over to Pastor Dale for the teaching. Uh, thank uh, Gloria. Glory to God and thank him for uh, uh, during, uh this time. Uh, a lot of times the stock market's gone down, everyone's being laid off, but through chaos and it blessed me in your job. So I want to give uh, God the glory and all of you for that and thank him for that. Amen. Amen. Awesome, son. Awesome. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Is it too late? No, it's not. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I had my mute on, and I was okay. talking. Um, I just wanted to say that I, um, I thank God for the saints and your prayers on uh, this past week. Um, uh, some of you know, and some of you don't know that um, uh, my son was in the hospital and um he had uh infection in his bone and the doctor told him that um he was going to have to get his uh foot amputated or uh because he couldn't live with the infection in his body mm. and so he had um called his dad and i first and asked what you know, what we thought, because he had just gotten the news, and, um, and I said, well, son, I said, uh, it's best, you know, to just let it, let it, let your, your foot go, I said, because you can live without a, a foot, but you can't live with the infection in your body, and so what they had to do was to do it in two phases, and they, uh, amputated his foot and mm. it went very well and then uh two days later they had to go and uh do the second amputation where they took off more of his leg uh further up right above the under the knee so that he would be able to wear a prosthesis so um he got out of the hospital on Friday and they sent him to rehab and he's in great spirits. Um, he said he can the prayers of the saints um, and he's doing better than expected. Um, and so I just wanted to give all praise to God because yeah. he knows and he is our healer. Amen. And, um, I just ask God to give him a a total um, uh, just blood transfusion, God's Amen. blood transfusion, not man's transfusion, Amen. and get all that infection out, and that uh, so we can start our healing process. And mm -hmm. so far, you know, God has uh, did exactly, you know, 
what I requested. And Thank uh, the Lord. God is just awesome. And, Amen. you know, I, I have to say once again, by his stripes, we are Amen. here. Amen. 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 All right. Any others? All right. Well, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Join us. Thank God. Unmute yourselves and join us for the blood. This time we'll give the floor to Pastor Daryl for tonight's lesson, um, Pastor Daryl. And uh, I just feel like praying one more time, if you don't mind. Maybe you feel like, do you feel like praying or you want me to? Uh, you go right ahead, sir. Go right ahead. Okay, so let's pray one more time. God, we just thank you again for these testimonies, God. Lord, we just, we just so glad we know you're in the part of our sins, God. God, we're so, so just uh, overjoyed by the scripture that says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. As Christ rather has died for us and risen again. God, we're so thankful that you will not lay anything to our charge because of the blood that's been shed. We're so overjoyed to know that our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that come what may on this earth, God, our names are there. And our hope is in that new city, God, a place you prepared for us, God. God, keep us and preserve us in this present life, God, according to your will and your power and your ability. Keep us through this thing, God. Everyone on this broadcast, God, keep us through this thing. Yes. Keep us, God, in Jesus' name. Yes. God, we're your sheep. God, we're your people, the sheep of your pastor, God. You're our shepherd. Keep us, Father. Yes. Guide us on the left, God. Guard us on the right, God. Yes. Guard us on the rear, God. Bring us out of this thing. Hold, God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. We we'll give you every day the praise. We know you're able to do it. And we offer up the sacrifice of praise. You are the one and only wise God. Yes. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we glorify you that we're found in you, God, and we can joy in that confidence that we have in your death, your burial, your resurrection, and the power you have yes. over every sickness, every disease, God. you got the power, yes. and we thank you that we're your children connected to you. Thank, thank you for your Holy Spirit in us, God. Help us to walk worthy of a vocation which you called us to, God, that we might evermore, our lives might be a testimony, that we might give you glory in our days. And give you the honor and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, God. The fruit of our lips giving you thanks, God. And our lives being a, bearing a testimony of the confidence and hope we have in you. We glorify you, God. Thank you again for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Darrell. Praise the Lord. How's everyone? Good to see you. Well. I, I like the, uh, the church service so far. So very good and i appreciate all those who shared um and those who didn't but i'm sure you had something to share as well uh tonight uh, for a lesson i wanted to prepare us for some of the things we're studying now in the sunday morning bible class uh, when i left off last sunday um we talked a little bit about a verse that we're going to cover this sunday of lord's will uh but the verse we had actually planned on covering sunday but we didn't get to it in verse seven and it says to remember those, and then it says whose faith follow. And what that word means was whose faith imitate, who, like would imitate those who have finished their race, how to end their race, those winners, and find faith in their lives and imitate it. And it occurred to me that we spent a great deal of time talking about faith throughout this entire book of Hebrews. In fact, we spent over one year in Hebrews 11. And we took our time, went through Hebrews 11, uh, but that's been, I guess, almost two years ago now. And so I want to revisit it because a lot of times um, we get so used to hearing faith, we forget what it really is. And we buy into how the world uses the word faith and they just toss it around. 
uh, when the Bible clearly says and defines what faith is. And it's a word for only us believers. It's our word, it belongs in our vernacular. So when someone in the world takes our word and start using it, we can't adopt that word. I don't know what a good faith estimate is. I think it's somebody's estimate. Um, but it's not a faith estimate because faith is exact. Faith is precise. Faith does not miss. Faith doesn't move. And so they've taken our word and tried to use it for different ways. So when we talk in about faith uh, amongst believers, we have to know what faith we're talking about. So tonight, what I want to do was um, just revisit what we talked about a year or so, a couple of years ago um, on faith because many of us who are participating today in Sunday school and Bible class, it wasn't there that Sunday morning when we talked about faith. And in fact, when I start looking at it again this week, it was a lot of stuff that I've, I've forgotten. I said, oh man, I, I forgot that was, that was part of it. And um, now I want to look at it fresh too. So uh, there's something new to it, obviously, because I'm not taking the same thing, but God is revealing something new to us now in this season that, that wasn't really, relevant at the time um you know someone uh said a verse i think with sister nisha tonight and she said preserve me O lord he said in thee i put my trust well when we see trust in old testament that that's faith and the same word for that word in hebrew is normally faith in the in the new testament so it says preserve me O lord keep me O lord because in thee in you lord i put my faith i put my trust because there's a lot of people that are speaking today, a lot of experts, and we can buy into what they're saying and make decisions based upon what they're saying and suffer ruin. Or we can buy into what God is saying and it may not make sense, but if God is saying it, then we're moving by faith because it's on God's word and we guarantee to live victoriously. So it's important for us to know, you know what faith is, uh, how do we get it, and be able to identify it so we could emulate it. So uh, tonight I want to just briefly recap what is faith. And when we covered this, you know, previously a couple years ago, we just talked about it. But tonight I can use a graphic and, and show you what it looks like uh, using some art or something like that. And I'd like to show you that. But I want to quickly get to the examples. And I picked three examples out of uh, Hebrews 11 that we spent some time on and just show, you know, how faith really looks in the life of a believer because every person mentioned in Hebrews 11 had, a, had something to come in their lives that could force them or uh, triangulate them to do something differently than what God's word has said and it made good walking around sense. But the reality is that the real heroes of faith, people just like you, people just like me, who will stand on God's word in that moment of truth, even if it doesn't make sense to you or anyone else, are actually living by faith. So it comes down to what has God said? And they didn't have the Bible. They just knew what God said. We, we, God could speak to us in his word that we could read, and God can speak to us in our prayer time. He answers our prayers. But God has said something. He's always talking to his children. And if God is speaking to us, and he is, then it, it is incumbent upon us to live by faith. And that is living by God's word. So I want to, um, I'm going to share my screen now. And I want to go through uh, the definition of what is faith. And um, then I want to move to, you know, what is it? How does it look? How do I pick it out on some people that we see in scripture and how we can apply those things to our lives? Because the, the reality is all those specific incidences may not occur to, in, in our lives. The type of instance will. We're gonna talk about Sarah. You know, Sarah was facing something that was just flat out impossible. We will face things that are impossible. But standing on God's word makes impossible things possible. We've heard that, but let's look at closely how it happened in her life. Because the reality is, it can also happen in our lives, or have already happened in our lives. We're going to look at Joseph as well. Joseph faced some impossibility, not necessarily an impossibility, but something that just most people just can't do. You just don't want to do it. But he was able to do it. And how, how did he do it? 
Well, it was by faith that he did something. I'm going to look at that. And then look at Moses. Moses faced something that was just like too hard. It was just flat out too difficult. And the truth is, I really don't want to do it anyway. It's too hard to do. But he did it anyway, and he did it by faith. And I think when we stop and think generally, these three instances that I selected, and again, now, this is the way I see these, these scriptures. So when it says by faith he did this, this is the way Daryl interpreted that. The Bible didn't say, explain exactly, you know, how that looks like faith. Uh, this is my interpretation. Your interpretation may be differently, but the, how your interpretation is, is it got to come down to standing on God's word and living by faith. Your next move has to be based on God's word. And when we do, then we're living by faith. So I want to quickly go through the definition again and recap it. I'm going to share my screen now and just look at the definition of faith according to Hebrews 11 and 1. And then um, we'll go and jump in anytime you have a question or comment. Um, and I think it's going to help us um, tonight. Um, this is God's word tonight. All right, so, uh, and I, okay, so everyone knows I'm not creative, okay, and so, and I don't really get all that creative stuff and fancy stuff, so, and I'm not trying to be, you know, John could do that stuff really nicely on his PowerPoint, but I, I just can't, okay. So, uh, I entitled this Faith by Design because I saw this uh, actual design in this uh, engineering magazine called Structure, and they basically all about building towers and things like that, and this was a, a real actual tower that were going up in, um, in New York, and so, they were starting to build. I said, this is great. Yeah. And uh, so it gives me a good start in to faith. What is it? You know, how do I get it? And then how to identify faith in action. All right, here's faith defined. Now, this is an actual picture of a place, a sky, uh, uh, what is sky, we call it a skyscraper uh, in New York, 55 foot to New York. Got it. Okay. On the right side, you see this. Um, artist rendition of this tower that was going up and um, and I want to use this as an illustration of Hebrews 11 when faith is defined so the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen so right now faith by definition in the Greek is a conviction of truth of anything any belief so faith is something that you really know it's not like I'm guessing Faith is something that's guaranteed. And that guarantee, what, what, what do you guarantee? It says the guarantee is the substance of things hoped for. So when this tower was built, um, it's basically a hope. It's a dream, it's an aspiration. Uh, you yourself have some hope, some dream, some aspiration. Where are you gonna be? What, where God's gonna take you? What's your purpose in life? You know, all these things you think are gonna happen are your dreams and aspirations and a hope for a future. And so when you take all your dreams and hopes, and, and how, how are you guaranteed that it's gonna take place? How are you guaranteed that your final destination will be one of, of joy and victory? victory? How, how, what's your guarantee? And if I say I'm guaranteed of that because I know the right people, well, the right people will let you down. Well, I'm guaranteed because there's a new government program where governments change. I guarantee because I have the right friends where friends will leave you. So what is that guarantee based upon? It has to be based upon something that is sure and something that is solid. Now, the Bible says faith is the substance of things so forth. Now, substance, if we break the word up, it's sub, which means under, and stance means something stable or something standing. So faith then is a thing that stands under whatever it's being hoped for. Now in the Greek, the word is hypostasis, and it's a setting of placing under substructure, it's a foundation. So the Bible says faith then is the foundation of things hoped for. So at some point, someone drew this building, which is great, they're gonna go build it one day, but that building means nothing if you don't have a foundation. So when we look at this building again, what we don't see a notice from any artist rendition or model is the foundation. And that foundation is the most important part of any structure. So when we look at our lives on what are we planning on being, where are we doing, where are we going in life? Great. Go for it. Pursue it. It's all your hopes, all your dreams. But what is the foundation there? 
that foundation has to be solid. That foundation has to be unmovable. That foundation has to be stable. That foundation has to be sure. And what is it? Well, we're going to find out exactly what is it, but it's nothing to be played around with, nothing to be tinkered with. So faith then is the thing that stands under everything you hope to happen. And it has to be solid. And what is it? It's, it's, it, it's the word of God. How do we get it? it, it it's from God's word. And it can't, it, it, it's no theory associated with it. It's not questionable. It's not if. It's, it's when and whenever it is, it's happening. In, um, in science, there's this uh, term called hypothesis. And it's like, if I said it, the Greek word is hypothesis. So we have hypothesis, which is based on theory. I got a hypothesis that this, which means you're going to prove me wrong after you do your sampling, statistics, and all that stuff. Oh, my hypothesis was wrong. Okay, I get that because it's based on theory. But the word in the Greek for substance is hypostasis, not thesis, but stasis. That means it's a fact. What I'm saying now is a fact. It is true already. It's not based on theory. So when we talk about faith, it's not based on somebody's theory or what someone assumed, some model that someone created. Oh, we have a new coronavirus model that shows X amount of people are going to die, okay, in this area. Well, my, as, as Pastor Bobby said, my address is in this area, and God is protecting my address in this area. So no, I won't be one of those. How do you know? How do you know? Because God's word, that's how I know. The model is based on theory. God's word is based on fact. So as we live in this season, there's so much theory going around us all the time. We cannot latch on the theory and make our next move based on somebody's hypothesis. Our next move has to be based on God's word. That's walking, that's living by faith. So when I look at it, of everything that I have planned in life, everything is going on. How am I walking? How am I living? The writer to the Hebrew says, live by faith, walk by faith, run by faith. And I tell you what, look at those who's already done it and just imitate them. So what did they do? The second part of that faith, a definition says faith is evidence of things hoped for. So there's this tower on the right, which is hoped for. And it's, and that was a lot of work and, and uh, into this foundation. More, work, more time was spent on a foundation probably than anything else, because without a foundation, no matter what you build up there, uh, doesn't last. So, if it's going to be a small structure, the foundation can be very small. If it's going to be a huge structure, if, God, if you got big plans, God got big plans for you, you need a big, solid foundation. I, I, I used to be in Boy Scouts with my sons, and we put tents out all the time. We never put a, a foundation on a tent. We just put the tent in the ground because it's coming up tomorrow. It's coming up the next couple of days. It's not a big deal. But if someone's building a house, and I've never built a house, but if someone's building a house, you don't say just start building it. The foundation has to be set. And so whatever your plan is, if you got big plans, make sure you're planning a great foundation. That foundation is based upon God's word. And so when it comes down to uh, how it's defined in scripture, faith is also the evidence of things not seen. Now, they can see this drawing, Floor 47, 47 floor suite 203. That's only on a drawing. But there's something called evidence of things not seen. The word in the uh, Greek for evidence is a legal term, which means title deed. So at some point, someone is actually owning something that doesn't even exist. You see the signs all the time pre construction selling. Wait a minute, you mean you're gonna sell me something right now today? And I can't move in it tomorrow. In fact, I can't even see it. I, I, that's not even a 47th floor. And I'm going to buy something on the 47th floor? Are you crazy? I, I need some proof before I buy the 47th floor and all you have out here is dirt and rocks and gravel. But someone buys into that. And that person that buys into it has a title deed to something that doesn't exist. You are a child of God with faith. You own something that you can't see, but you know it's there. You own something that someone else can't even see. It, it, it may not even believe it, but you know it's there. You own eternal life. You own all that God has promised you. And you walk around with a title deed in your pocket because you own it. 
The title Amen. he said whose name it is and what it is that's in your pocket. No one can argue with you anymore. You don't Glory have to, to God. Say, I got the deed in my hand. I got the yeah. deed in my pocket and I own it. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. And what God has promised me, I own. Amen. I got the deed to it. Hallelujah. I have the title deed. I got faith. Hallelujah. So now, we don't walk around like everyone else, listen to different experts invoking fear. Glory to God. About the next move. We walk around like we know who makes the final move, make the final call, the one who's calling the shots, the one whose word doesn't change from Monday to Tuesday to Wednesday to Thursday. Hallelujah. But he said it's still good. Thank you, Jesus. That's faith in God. So we now, Thank as you, Lord. God, especially in this season, can't listen. To we got an expert already. Glory we got the power to leave the signature and the seal. And God's already said it's mine. Oh, I got the 47th okay. floor. I got two sweeps. You know what? Because he's Lord. told me I got two sweeps. Thank you, Lord. You can't see the first one. You ain't supposed to see it. You don't, you're not an owner. But we all children Thank of you, God. Jesus. We all have this. Whatever Thank God you, has Jesus. planned for us and purpose and given us, it is ours. We own it. Thank now, you, our job Lord. is to live like it, walk like it, act like Go ahead and buy the furniture. You moving in tomorrow? No, but you're moving in. Next week? No, but you're moving in. We don't know when, but you're moving in. God's word is sure. Hallelujah. It is solid. Thank you, Jesus. It's stable. It doesn't move. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Pastor. Look at uh, how how do you how do you really get this this faith anyway? Because now I think I want some. And it's not wishing and just hoping, but the Bible says clearly that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now, when we look at the Old Testament, when we look at these three examples that we have, we did not have God's word like we have it today. But God still spoke. Amen. And God still speaks today. Amen. And today we have an advantage because we have God's word. We can let him speak to us anytime. Pick up the Bible mm. and read it. Yes. And I don't mean Amen. put it on your pillow and go to sleep like the word's going to come into you. They don't do it. And it's no real shortcut to God's word. And I know at one point in my life, you know, I remember saying, okay, I got to get more serious about studying God's word. And, and, um, and I said, I'm, I won't leave any morning without studying God's word. And I got me in a devotional. And I'm not knocking devotional. But I got the devotional and I read this one verse and I read the devotional. Well, that's good. But... Okay, you got to go to the next grade now. Okay, so that's a good start reading, reading, getting a verse and let somebody talk about it. Okay, good. But what if just read the verse and let God speak to you? So Glory I used to, to do this thing where I would, I would pray, read, then go running. And then say, oh, I, I think I need to read first. So if I just read the Bible, just read God's word and then pray, it's amazing how much stuff I was going to pray about that I don't really need to, I need to thank God for it because that scripture that I just read all of a sudden means something but what I was praying about. And sometimes I try to remember what did that scripture really mean and I can't even get there. I can't, I mean, I couldn't even, I tried wow. my best to recall sometime that I was praying for something but I read a scripture that answered it and I couldn't even tie the two together. I, I couldn't, and to the day, I, I wanted to give an example tonight but I still couldn't do it because when I take God's word, God's word is a lie. And whatever I was about to pray about, God's word already spoke to it. And I don't even think that's what the verse means. But at that moment in time, wow. that verse meant to me right then and there. And that's probably why mm -hmm. I can't share it, because it's not what the word means. But for me, God said, I'm going to speak to you right now through what you just read. God's mm -hmm. word is real. So faith then coming by studying God's word. You know, I, I tried one day to tell, um, and you know, because I, you know, I get these different apps, and I got the Bible on tape and the Bible on CD, and sometimes I just play it. That's still no substitute for reading God's word because I got to read some verses twice or some words three or four times and some sentence over and over and over again. But when I let the play in the background, the, the, the reader storm just keep going. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got to let the word get inside. You know, like mm -hmm. dad always say, chew the word, then chew the cut, let it come back up. You got to digest God's word. Take your time. I'm not doing a chapter a day. Sometimes I do three verses, and the three verses go nine, ten times in the same day. And I'm not moving until I get that down into me and I own it. And so mm -hmm. when we read God's word, it's not like when we read this and move on about my business. 
I'm going to read and say, God, I'm going to enjoy this. I want you to feed me. I want to hear from you. And I'm just going to start reading right here. The first chapter of Romans and start speaking, God, because I'm listening. And God right. will speak. And God will speak. And so we get faith by hearing God's word. And faith doesn't come any other way. Because mm. faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. God will speak to his word if we read it. And God will speak to us period, in prayer time. But I don't know whether I could say, God, I'm going to neglect your word that I read. I just want you to speak to me directly, like we're on a telephone. I don't, I don't know whether it works that way or not. I think I would read God's word and say, God, speak to me through your word. I'm listening. And God will speak. And then we talked before about faith. We need faith though, because it's impossible to please God without faith. So we have to get God's word in us. And then when things happen, and things will happen on our journey, when you have to go right or left, which way is the word of God telling me? It's this way. I know it doesn't make sense, but the person that says, I know it doesn't make sense, but I'm going to choose this route anyway because of God's word, then you are living and walking by faith. And all of us, every last one of us, has an opportunity and will have to make a choice on whether to walk by what we know that is true and factual or what God is saying, which is true and factual and real. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times we say, oh, that was a lie. Well, I got that. The devil does do a lot of lying. Okay, but the reality is, the devil says a lot of things that are true too. If you're sick today, you are sick. The devil say you're sick. He's telling the truth. You are sick. You have a disease. You do have a disease. I had a meningioma. I never heard of it. it was a brain tumor. I didn't call the devil a lie. The devil's telling me the truth. Yes, you have a brain tumor, but the devil said you're gonna die. Now you lying because oh, I'm not gonna die. Amen. You, you, you all right? Amen. It's, it's yes. bad. It is bad. Amen. Yeah, but you can't tell what's gonna happen. Only God can tell what's gonna happen next. I wanna know Amen. how bad it is so I can tell God, here's what they're saying. What am I to do? I want to know the name Amen. of the brain tumor so I can tell God, God, they say it's a meningioma. You know what that is. Yes. What's the you, answer? Lord. God made the meningioma and he Thank sent you. the meningioma packet because Thank he you, God. So yeah. God speaks. The devil tells you whatever it is, fine. Coronavirus is real. People are dying for real. Yes, but I'm not dying because God didn't tell me I'm dying. God said, Thank I'm living, Lord. so I am living. Thank you, Jesus. So Thank we you, Lord. move and walk by faith. What has God said? And I, I honestly believe that, like when I know I can go pick my kids up in a little playground in Jacksonville, and I say, come on for dinner. I had never snatched them off that field while they was running out for a touchdown, when it just grabbed them, threw them in the car, said it's dinner time. I sometimes hey, it's time to come home. Wait, one more down. Okay, one more. You come. I mean, that's me with my own children. Right. But I let them know it is time. And God will let his children know when it's time. And he ain't told me that, so I'm living. And if he haven't told oh, you yeah, that, God. you're living too. You're a child of God, so you walk by faith. What has God said? And God has said, you shall not die but live and declare the mm. wonderful works of the Lord. Just like these Thank testimonies. You, Jesus. God has blessed all of us. He'll, he's a faithful God. And our job is to walk and live by faith because he said it. What did God say? Mm. walking by fear and you know i get on this thing with two people talking about fear is false evidence appearing real no fear is real <laughs> i've seen the x-rays they wasn't lying to me it's not false it's real evidence looking very real but it cannot tell me what's going to happen next it is a snapshot in time come on snapshot in time is real but what does God have to say? That's the only question now. Yes. What does God have to say about this x-ray? What does God have to say about this MRI? If God hasn't spoken shut up Oh, hallelujah. So yeah. God has a chance to speak. And a child Thank of God you. said, God, what are you saying about this? You I preach the pastor. He said, you're coming out of this thing. I'm coming out of this thing. Hey, I'm a... Don't know how. Hey. Don't know when, but I'm coming out. Oh, yeah, I'm here. So we live by faith. Thank you, Jesus. We walk by faith. And so when we look yeah. at the truth of God, yeah. what was going on before us, let's look at how they responded in that moment of truth when it took faith to do what they did because we would have those same, not the same thing, but the same type of things. I wanna look at the first one. And the first one is uh, Sarah. 
So sometimes it, it just, it's just impossible. It's humanly impossible. Because look at, the Bible says, through faith, also Sarah herself. Now, I, I just know this is just night. I've never really paid attention to herself. Okay, so this hasn't involved anybody else at this point. I know we're talking about Abraham, the father of the faithful. Got it. We're going to talk. Abraham is literate all through Hebrews 11. But this verse says Sarah herself. Mm. So Abraham had something to do with it. Well, I, I'm sure he did. But the reality is this is Sarah's faith, okay? And this is what Sarah did, okay? Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Absence of Abraham, she received strength to conceive seed. Now, receive strength, look at the, uh, the Greek definition at the bottom. Receive, to take with the hand, to take possession, to lay hold of, in order to use it, to claim, to seize, to not let go, to take what is one's own. She took something and didn't let it go. By faith, what did she take? Strength, inherent power, dwelling by name. She was able to lay hold of power that she did not have and did not let that power go by faith. But look at the reality. The real reality was, and this is the truth now, the truth is uh, she was past age. I'm sorry. You just flat out too old. They past age, past opportune season. That season for you is done. That doesn't happen to people at your age. You too old to go back to school. It's not happening. Just be who you are. You, you can't catch up with the young people now. That's a young man's situation. That's a young woman's situation. You're old, man. You're old. I mean, all that stuff is true unless God told you something differently. Glory. And so <laughs> none of this is a lie. She was past right. age. You know what? The Bible yes. says she was past age. <laughs> the Bible ain't lying. Right. People thought she was past age. The Bible says she was past age. Got it. That's a fact. But she got there a certain way. So what we can get from this is that once we hear the reality of the truth, it's impossible. Your past says you can't go back and be a young woman, go back and be a young man. Now, God, I wish I had done that when I was 17. I wish I had done that when I was 21. God, we understand you're not 21 now. You're not 17 anymore. You're past age. But something she did, look at the underlying part, but she judged him faithful who had promised. So somewhere in her mind, she had to take what she knew to be true on past age. My husband's body is good as dead. Promise to me. God's word is out there. Now, how do I treat God's word in the midst of all these medical experts? The Bible says she judged him faithful. Judge, mm -hmm. look at the Greek word, hegeomai, she considered, deemed, or accounted. So she had to do some rationalization in her mind and say, you know what? I'm going to take God's word and account him. I'm going to consider him as faithful, the one who promised. I'm going to say he's trustworthy. I can put my trust in him. Regardless of all these facts that I already know to be true, because he said it, I'm going to bank on it because of who Thank he is. You. So she judged God as being faithful. So forget everything else you know about being true. What do you really know about God? Thank you, God. Has he ever failed you? Has he ever Thank said you. something that did not occur in your life in the time or season that he appointed? I know the answer is no, because I've, I've done it for 60 years now, and it haven't happened. He's 60 and O in my life. And if you're younger or older, he's got to be undefeated in your life as well. So you too must judge him faithful who has promised. Now, if he's, if he's failed you, you got a right to go ahead and hit that little button, raise your hand, hit the flag, come off mute and say, wait a minute, brother. Uh, he's failed me uh, when I was 18 and 21. So he, I, I got two years. Well, he didn't come through. I, I'm going to give you the floor. But if he's undefeated in your life, then you have a right of responsibility to say, I judge him faithful. I got a, I got a strong yeah. track record. I don't even have the time. I don't even have the time to tell you. I, I, mean, I can go by year by year by year by year and tell you how God has never, never, never failed. So when it comes down to right now, I still judge him faithful who is promised. You know, I almost yeah. had a little, little fear last night, and I'm going to put uh, Dr. Anderson on blast here for a second. But uh, I was talking to Dr. Anderson. She's on a call last night. 
And uh, I went down and, and I was trying to find something and I was dealing with some dusty stuff and I, I, I came back upstairs and then I coughed. And she'd been a doctor, said, that sounds like a bronchitis type of crawl, crawl, cough. And I said, what? She, oh yeah, that's definitely like the, sound like a bronchitis cough. And I got scared, you know what? And then my chest, I didn't tell her this, my chest started hurting a little bit. And I thought, wait a minute. I said, where have I been? You know, what's, what's really going on? And I thought, I don't have no coronavirus. You know, and I told her, I said, uh, and I, that's what I told myself. I didn't tell her that she didn't say anything about it. She said, that sounds like a, I said, well, if it happens again, will you be able to tell? She said, yeah. So we talked a while longer, it never happened. And I said, if I cough again tonight, I'll just uh, record it. She said, I can listen to the, play it on the, uh, on the messenger and I'll be able to hear it and tell you what kind of cough it is. Well, you know what? I got up and prayed, you know, I haven't coughed again. It's been 20 oh, hours God. and I don't mind coughing. But God said, look, right. you don't even need to worry about this thing. I, I, mm, you know, I, I just can't do it. Because God hasn't done, he, he hasn't said it's okay for me to get it. That's why I'm not getting it. And Thank if I did, Lord. he's still God. Amen. <laughs> he is, Amen. He's God. But nothing happens Amen. without his say so. So Amen. we don't have to deal with all the facts. We deal with the one who can take the facts and say, this is now not even a fact anymore. Amen. This is what we're dealing with. We can judge him faithful who has promised. What has God said? Thank you, Lord. When it's out of our hands. What has God said? When a doctor says we've done as much as we can do. What has God said? I want you to say it's between you and your God now. Because now God gets the floor. And God Thank has a stage. Yeah. God has a mic. And he said live. Yes. Glory to God. Preach, Daryl. Daryl gets to the point where she says, I don't know about all these facts. Mm. I'm going to judge him faithful who's promised. Mm -hmm. And that and that she received strength. Every last one of us could point back to an impossibility in our lives. Oh, you can. And you know you can. And God came through. It's not testimony service, but you could do it. And take over the whole thing tonight. You know you can. Or do it in your own private time. And then let something else happen. And say, this same God who did that. Glory. <laughs> He's still on the throne. He's not on holiday. Yes, yes. He hasn't shown any indication that he's planning on vacating the throne, and he's not. Thank you, Lord. He's still God. Judge him faithful who is promised. Thank you, Jesus. And we could do the impossible. Then we go on to Joseph. I kind of like this Sarah thing. I mean, I, I, you know. I preached it. I just done Sarah. I mean, Sarah's like. Break it yeah, down. Break it down, teacher. You know. <laughs> um, and I'm going to go through these, uh, probably, I didn't know I was spend that much time on Sarah, so I may uh, just kind of go through this a little faster, but um, we got all night. We're good. I only got two. So Joseph is uh, to faith to not to do what many people naturally do. And so, and a lot of times we find ourselves in this position, and it's, um, look at Hebrews 11, 22. It says, by faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. Now, there are a lot of stories about Joseph in the Bible. And so when the Hebrew writer decided to include Joseph in the what we call the Faith Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11, I could have thought a lot of stories. I could say, by faith, Joseph didn't stay in the pit. By faith, Joseph didn't stay in the prison. By faith, Joseph got to the palace. By faith, I mean, you could. Have you ever heard a Baptist preacher preach this thing? I mean, I heard a Baptist preacher in New York. I mean, he wore this thing out from the prison to, wait, from the pit to the prison to the palace. Oh, man, he wore this thing out something terrible. I mean, I was like, whoo, boy. And then you get to Hebrews 11 by faith of Joseph. I know what it's going to be about because God told him he was going to be this when he was a little boy. And when he got to the pit, he still had faith in God's word. And he found himself in the prison. He still had God's word. And when he got to the house, he still had God's word. And famine came and he still had God's word. But then the Hebrew writer says, when he was dying, he made mention of the departing of children of Israel. I mean, how big of a deal is that? That seems like such a, a lackluster deal. I mean, I was like, Joseph, Joseph, wait a minute, was that it? Is that, the, that, is that the faith of your life? How big is it? Well, it has to be huge because he had too many things to choose from. So you have to go back to Genesis 50 and read the account of his dying to find out what was so big about it. So let's read it. 
And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of his la this land unto the land which he swears to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath. He made him promise now. Now, children of Israel saying, God will surely visit you, and you should carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, but they didn't bury him now. They embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. So what exactly was going on? Now, Joseph is rich. Joseph is powerful. Joseph is running Egypt. So you got this rich, powerful uncle who's about to die. And he's saying, okay, everybody come back. Everybody come in. I'm about to, everybody come in. Come in here. I'm about to die. Well, I know he's getting ready to talk about who's getting the Bentley, who's getting the house, who's getting the palace, who's getting the money, who's getting the land. I mean, how are you going to divvy this stuff up? Who's going to be left in charge? Because at this time, his whole family was rolling. I mean, they were just, they had, they had all the land in Goshen. I mean, they were just like, they were just it. So now they come and Joseph about to die. So now, what are you going to say, Joseph, in your last words? And by faith, Joseph basically said, look, all this stuff we got here, all this land, all these riches, this palace, and all this power, and this position I've given all y'all, he basically said, this ain't it. This ain't it. I'm dying. And you know what? Don't you bury me. When y'all, God's going to visit you and take you out of here. Just like he told Abraham, he told Isaac, he told Jacob, we got a promised land coming, which means all this is okay. This is good. This is better than we were. But God has something great for us. And his word is sure. And when that day comes, take my bones out of here with you. Okay? I don't even want my bones to be left here in this land. But this is a good mm -hmm. land. This is great. We're in charge. We're doing so well. We all have houses and lands and cattle and all this stuff. This is great. Yeah, but this is not what God has called us to be. Mm. This is a way station. So how many times can we look at all that we have and all that we experience right now and say, this is a way station. I've got life the way I finally want it. It's a way station. I finally mm. made ends meet. It's a way station. I finally got that promotion I'm at the top of the ladder now. It's a way station. I'm in the executive suite now. It's a way station. I got a seat on my title. It's a way station. I got my dream job. It's a way station. My dream house. It's a way station. Mm -hmm. All of this means nothing. Amen. And Joseph said, all these things that we all value, this stuff we'll never have. I will never have a palace or all the gold or all the land they had. And he said, you know what, this ain't even it. And don't y'all get confused and think this is it. Because God's going to visit you in this land right here and take you out of here. And, it, and the word came at a time where they didn't really want to leave. This is, let, let's get some more juice out of this thing. But there was no sense of urgency, according to the scripture, that they want to get out of Egypt. They were enjoying Egypt. But God's word was sure. And God's word was so sure that we read in Exodus, and look at uh, my uh, question three. Uh, Exodus, look at how it played out. Now, the Bible says, I can't read it, let me see. And it, uh, Exodus 13, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go. So now Moses, they all back away in Egypt. Y'all remember the story, right? When they all leave in Egypt, y'all know the story? That God led them out through the way of the land of the Philistines. But God led the sea people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. Look at verse 19 in Exodus 13. Exodus 13, not Genesis. Exodus 13. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him. For he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you should carry up my bones away hence from you. That's what Moses said. Now my question to you is, where was Moses? In Genesis 50, where was Moses when Joseph said, take my bones up out of here? Now, hadn't been born yet. if, what, was I going to say something, what? Hadn't been born yet. Hadn't been born yet. <laughs> he was nowhere around. This is hundreds and hundreds of years later. 
But there was still the promise from God that God made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and then to Joseph. And the people that Joseph told the promise to, they died. So what they told it to somebody else, and they died. And they told somebody else, but God's word is still alive. So when it came down to Moses, Moses knew what God's word said, that he's going to visit them and take them out of Egypt. And that uh, Joseph, he said, take his bones. And I'm the leader here. I'm going to get Joseph's bones out of this coffin. We didn't bury him. And we're taking him out of his land with us. And I know for a fact we're going to the promised land because Joseph said we was going to the promised land. And we're taking his bones and we're going to the promised land because God's word is sure. Yes. So no matter what's going on or how long it is, God's word is still sure. Whatever that great place, a great plan, a great purpose that God is planned for you, don't settle in for something inferior. Hmm. Don't settle in and say this is good enough. Because hmm. it ain't. The only thing that's good enough is what God has planned. And you'll know when you get that. Because he'll tell you. This is God's word. And so, so Joseph, learn from Joseph, is like, you know, we got a lot of good things that happen in our life. And we're going to call them blessings from God. And you know what? They are blessings from God. Can't argue that. They are blessings from God. But he didn't call for you to sit there and think this is it. This is the promised land. I mean, we go back to the children, the 12 tribes. Not everybody even crossed Jordan. Some of them said, you know what? This is good land. Was it half tribe, Manasseh, and one other tribe? I can't remember which ones. But two of them stayed on the other side of Jordan. So you know what? I know God's got the promised land over there, but you know what? This is good enough because we got a lot of cattle that he's blessed us with, and it's a lot of land for the cattle. I think it's the tribe of Gad, I think. I remember. But two of them stayed on the other side of Jordan, never going on to get what God is planning for. I don't want to be that guy. I want everything God has planned and everything he's blessed me on the way. I'm willing to say, you know what? This ain't it. And I would discount it in a minute to pursue and to get what all God's plan. But it takes faith to do that. By faith, Joseph knew that this wasn't it because it sure looked like it. And now I gotta go and I, I can't even touch, feel, or realize what God has promised. But Abraham didn't say Isaac and Jacob and not me, but I'm gonna tell the people that's coming after me, God's word is still sure. God's word is still sure. God's word is still shoes by faith. You make the next move based on God's word. So don't settle in. And then the last one is uh, Moses. And there's a lot we could say about Moses as well. But this one was one that uh, I think personally had the most fun with it because uh, I like math. And, uh, and I just like the way he's doing some calculations. <clears throat> so I call it faith to do the heart, do the math. <laughs> That's too hard for many people. And uh, so let's look at, look at it and see if you see the mathematical equation. Um, Hebrews eleven twenty four. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Shoot, now that's, that's, that's power and position. You know, like next line to be the, the it in, uh, in Egypt. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for one season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of reward. Now, so the key thing here is verse 25, it says choosing. So at some point, this is Moses when he comes to Jesus, at some point you're going to grow up enough well, you're going to make a choice. I used to pick up uh, one of the mothers in, uh, in Miami to go to Sunday school. And I used to pick her up on Sunday mornings. And she would say, um, and she had sons and daughters. And she said, people always ask me, you know, why come LA got to come pick me up? And one of my sons, uh, my son won't come pick me up. And uh, she said, but you know what I tell them? I said, well, what? She says, I tell them uh, when my son still buying his own shoes, that's when he can start making his own decision. And he saw about his own shoes a long time ago. So he'd go where he want to go when he want to. Now, if I was buying his shoes, I would tell him what to do. But at some point, she's saying he makes his own choice. And so at some point, all of us will make our own choice. We buying our own shoes, you're making your own choice. If I use, use, her, use her language. So jo Moses made a choice at this point. Now he's grown enough to make the choice. 
And he says, I'm going to suffer affliction with the people of God. And um, then enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. Because the reproach of Christ with that uh, is greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. So choosing is to take one for oneself to prefer, suffer afflictions are real, to be ill-treated in company with, so you basically are being afflicted, persecution with somebody else. Enjoy the pleasures. That means to have and hold. They, you really are enjoying them. It's not like uh, sin is not pleasure. No, these are real pleasures and enjoyment, according to the Bible. So he could actually enjoy himself. Okay, that's real. But look at the word season. It says temporary. It ain't going to be always that way. So you can enjoy the pleasure of sin for how long? Temporary. You got that. And then esteeming. Now, we saw that word a while ago when we talked about Sarah. Esteeming is the same word in the Greek, hageomai. At some point, he started to figure things out in his head. And so let me, re, let me recalculate this. Let me change the way I'm, I'm looking at this thing. Let me do some real accounting here. Let's, let's put all the factors on the table now and add the numbers up. Somehow or another, he got to the point where he could take that equation to the top, look on the right side. So I have self-affliction with the God's people, plus the reproach of Christ. That's one thing that I will endure and it's painful. And then on the other side, I have the pleasure of sin for a season, plus the treasures in Egypt. Now, he could see the treasures in Egypt. He lives in the palace. He see all the gold. He see all the land, the palace and the power. That's real. I could touch it and feel it and count it and spend it. The fancy clothes, all that. And he's the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I got that. I'm next in line. All that position and power is real. The problem is suffering affliction with the people of God is real too. And the reproach of Christ is real too. But he says, I got one side, the left side of the equation, and the right side of the equation. Which one is greater? Okay, this is for 25 points. What goes in the box? Less than sign? Greater than sign or equal to sign? Greater than. Somebody said greater than sign. You get 25 points. You get the right answer. It's greater than sign. Okay, so how do we get to greater? So I can say, well, there's something else there because my math doesn't add up like that. Okay, so it's this new math that takes in consideration of things that we don't see because it's by faith Moses did this. So the new math says, if I look at the word hegemai again, uh, where is it, uh, esteeming, consider. That's something else you're considering. You're considering something that's not on the paper. You're considering something that no one else can see you. You're considering something that's not even there yet. What are you considering? He said, esteeming the approach of Christ's greater riches. Oh, wait a minute. So, so you're not really saying the pledge of sin and the treasure in Egypt are not riches. You're saying they are riches. Because otherwise, he would say, considering the approach of Christ, riches. But he said, greater riches. So there's something called great riches, which is on the right side of the equation. That's great riches, right? You can't say greater unless you know something is great. So on the right side are great riches. Pledges of sin for a season, treasures in Egypt, power, palace, those are great riches. That's a fact. But he says, greater riches. Okay, speak to me. Suffering affliction with the people of God, uh, you're still in the minus column of me. Reproach of Christ, you're still in the minus column of me. What are you doing? I'm esteeming something. I'm accounting something. What are you accounting? Look at verse 26. He said, for he had respect unto, that word in the Greek, respect unto, means to turn eyes away from other things, pledges of sin, treasures of Egypt, turn my eyes away from that, and also turn my eyes away from the suffering affliction and the reproach of Christ, Turn my eyes and lock in on something else. That's what respect unto me. So what did he lock in on? He locked in on the recompense of the reward. That word in the Greek means a payment of wages due. So really what Moses did, he looked at the equation and said, wait a minute. On the left side, there are some wages due me for suffering of Affliction with the people of God. There's some wages due me for suffering and enduring the reproach of Christ. There's a payday coming from somebody, and that pay 
person making the payment is none other than God Almighty. And I believe his paychecks are good. I believe his paychecks are greater. I believe his paychecks are sure. So never mind the pledge of sin for a season or the treasures of these that will rot away. I got a payday coming from God. So yeah, I will suffer affliction. Yes, I will suffer a of Christ because I got a payday coming from God. But it takes faith to see the payday. Hallelujah. So Moses did the hard math that we could do today. We add up things on the right side and left side. I got to take the, the path of least resistance. The least resistance? Are you sure? How about the one that gives you the most power at the end? Mm. Or which route is that? The one that God chose. I, mean, I, might, I, I throw this in. I didn't think about this this morning. Otherwise, I would have drawn this uh, little example. But when I was an engineer at OU, uh, uh, I had I had a I had a mech I had a way to get through the real hard classes because when I got to I guess the sophomore and there's two classes that was like supposed to be like everybody gets F in okay well I didn't want an F okay I mean I did get one but it wasn't an engineering class it was some other class I shouldn't have got F in but these classes in engineering which I knew was a possibility of getting the F in I would take the class. I would go sit in the back of the class for the entire semester, take the test, take the quizzes, turn them in, and get them up. I've been on the road and see, can I get an A? Well, I get like a D or a C. Okay, fine. Then the next semester, I would take the class again from the same instructor. And I never made A like that, but I got a B. And I said, I'm glad I took the class the first time, probably would have made an F. But one of the classes that I finally got right was circuit analysis. And in circuit, uh, uh, DC circuit analysis, it's like if I want power to come out of an amplifier and I got a circuit, y'all, I'm trying to make it simple, okay? But if I got a circuit and I got a current flowing through a circuit, okay? And I have a junction, okay? I put things called a resistor there. And that's, a resi that's something that keeps the current from flowing. The, the higher the resistance on one side and the lower resistance on the other side, the circuit, the current's gonna flow where the least resistance is. Okay, but if you force the current to go through the one with the most resistance and the same current going through the least resistance, both of them come out. But the one that had the most resistance when it comes out creates the most power. So if you want power, <laughs> you don't have to increase the current. All you gotta do is increase the resistance. You do that as a child when you, when you, you know, cleaning the car with the water hose, how do I make it more force? I squeeze it, the water's still gonna come out but it comes out with more power. So the more resistance, the more power. So we don't have to shy away from stuff saying, I wanna choose the path of least resistance. Pick the path with the greatest resistance. You're still coming out of this thing because God's gonna bring you through. And when he bring you through, mm -hmm. you're gonna have with power, power to do it, power to do everything he put you on this earth to do. And next two, power to be a witness. Mm. You're coming out of it. So go ahead and enjoy the resistance. You're coming out of this thing. And you're gonna come out with power. Why? Because God said so. Standing on God's word. There's a big payday coming. Focus in on the big payday. Focus, focus in on what God has done. And if we do like Moses, we do the hard math and say, you know what? <laughs> this doesn't make sense, but you know, I'm gonna pick side A. Yeah, I know y'all gonna laugh at me, <laughs> but I just locked in on something y'all can't see. Oh, mm. But that's on the 47th floor. I know oh. it's not here yet, but it's coming. When? I don't know when it's coming, but it's coming. You sure? Oh, I'm sure. Because God's word is like that. And so we can't get trapped up in these people saying, well, it didn't come. Oh, but it's coming. It still didn't come. Oh, but it's coming. And so Moses locked in on a payday. And I, I think my dad used to always sing the song, get time in, payday is coming after a while. Payday is coming after a while. I mean, like, he didn't say coming next Tuesday. He didn't say Friday, but payday is coming after a while. And mm. we got to live our lives like payday is coming after a while. Payday is coming after a while. We have a payday coming. We can put with a whole bunch of suffering and affliction and, and, and reproach of Christ and, and refusing the pleasure of sin for a season and rejecting the treasures of each. Why? Because we have a payday coming. I ain't not locking into all this little stuff that's going to erode next week, next year, all right, in my very hands. Stop work, go down tomorrow. And then what? Well, they say, well, some things that happen. Well, my faith is not in that. Like, like, like the sister said, I think Sister Nisha said, in thee I put my trust, God. Mm -hmm. I was telling someone on the phone yesterday, 
uh, I was telling somebody yesterday uh, that on yesterday, I was going through my phone and I picked out different things that happened on this day. And I remember a year ago yesterday, I went to deposit a check that I didn't expect I was getting. I didn't even know I was getting it. But I got this check and I deposited it. And uh, I thought, man, that's great because I didn't know it was coming. I, you know, everybody knew I wasn't working. But I got this check. I thought, I didn't even know it was coming. I thought, but I was low. And I'm thinking, isn't this amazing how God won't let me run out? He just mm. won't do it? You know, and mm. I don't have any plans to run out. But you know what? I have a plan to always run low. Amen. I, 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 and you know what? Because it's always in God's hands. Amen. And you know what? I love it. I love mm. being cared for. I love being held. I love the way God does his paydays. He just does it. It's guaranteed. Recommends of war. So we don't lock in on any of that stuff that's temporary for a season. I know that's hard math, and most people can't do it. But the child of God, by faith, will do the hard math and make those calls. Mm. And you know, and I think that's my last slide, but uh, here's that building. And uh, they started that building in 2015. And they finished that building in 2018. And somebody, there was a law firm, bought the first suite in there long before the thing was built. They bought on top of it long before it was built. And I don't know whether it was supposed to be completed in 2017 or not, or early 2018, because all, all these projects always have delays. But one thing for sure, the building, this is the building. It really did take place. It's 55 Hudson Yards, Manhattan, New York. I've seen the building, okay? It's a beautiful building. And it's real today. But in 2016 and 17, it just probably didn't look like much. 2015, just on paper. But the reality is that faith is the substance of things hoped for. That's all the hopes are really. It's on a solid foundation. And it's the evidence of things not seen. It's the title deed to what can't see. But the reality is, if God said it, it will come. But the problem happens is when someone says it's going to happen in 2016 and God didn't say it was going to happen in 2016 or it's going to happen in 2017 and God didn't say 2017 or it's going to happen in 2018 and God didn't say it was going to happen in 2018. Because God, I don't see many times, if many times in Scripture, what God tells you when you're coming out, unless he's making a special point. He just says you're coming out. And, I mean, you say, well, they were, in, they were 70 years in bondage. But he says 70 years for a reason. You read the Bible, and God told him, because you, one year for every Sabbath. Okay, you, you violate the Sabbath, 70 Sabbath, said, yeah, one year for every Sabbath, that means 70 years. Okay, we get that. But he didn't just say 70 years just so y'all know when. He was letting them know why they were going into captivity. So when I look at the biblical model, I don't see what God's telling them when you're going to come out. But he does say, you're coming out. So there's a, there's a book that I loaned to someone called Good to Great. And in the book, it talks about the POWs. And in the POWs, uh, some of them made it out fine, and some people died in the POW camps. And they asked uh, one of the persons there, uh, who did not fare well in the prison of war camp? Which, which ones had the toughest time? And, and he said, well, they died. He said, many died as POWs. Uh, not from the torture, but from the broken hearts. He said, because what happened in the POW camps is that uh, the different politicians and the celebrities would come there and they would tell them, uh, we're going to have you out of here by Labor Day. We're going to have you out of here by Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving came Labor Day and they didn't come out. We're going to have you out and back in America by Christmas. Well, Christmas came and they didn't make it. We're going to have you out by New Year's Day, but New Year's Day came and it did not happen. We're going to have you out by President Day. President Day came and it did not happen. We're going to have you out by Memorial Day. Memorial Day came and they were still there. Those ones died. He said, the, the ones that survived, they never said we're getting out of here by Memorial Day. They said we're getting out of here. We're not going to be out by Christmas, but we're getting out. We're not going to be out by New Year's Day, but we're coming out. So we don't have these 21-day miracles, seven-day turnarounds, three-day breakthroughs. God didn't promise you three, seven, or 21. So, But God did promise you that I will get you through this. I will be with you in the water. I will be with you in the fire, and you will not be burned. I will be with you. I will take you through the rivers. But he didn't say when. Yes. 
So yes. by faith, we know that we're coming out. We don't know when, but we're coming out. Thank don't you. know when it'll finish, but we know God's word is sure. So the child of God don't move by these uh, timetables, artificial days. We just know God's going to do it. When is coronavirus mm -hmm. over? I don't know, but I know God will keep us through it however long it's here. God's word is sure. Yes. So whatever we're experiencing right now, stand on God's word. He's bringing you through this. He's bringing you out of this. He's still God. He's got you. How long? Doesn't matter how long. Doesn't matter. Doesn't not matter. Enjoy the ride. Have faith. Thank you, Jesus. God's got it. That's all. Amen. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time, but I, I, I'm, I'm happy about it. I mean, it, it makes you relax, really. You better stop mm -hmm. thinking about it. So I'm not really driving this thing after all. You mean he's not my co-pilot after? No, he's, he's, he's on. You sit back in your first class seat and relax. Lean, lean, back. lean back. Lean back. 180 degrees. Put your feet up. Enjoy your flight. God's got it. <laughs> you know, but you're going to land safely. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Amen. 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 I, I, I tell you what. Um, it just gets, it just gets deeper. You, you okay, Michael? You can, you can, you can come to church if you want to. <laughs> um, it gets. Uh, he, Michael is Pastor John teaches a class on Fridays, and Michael is part of that class, so he don't necessarily attend on Thursday nights. But I guess he must be on camera anyway. But uh, that was just an awesome, awesome, awesome word. Uh, <laughs> I know, it, I know it helped me. Did it help anybody else? It helped me. Amen. Word, yeah. it helped me. Amen. Amen. Would you open the floor up to see if anybody has anything they want to say uh, in light of this word? I feel better. I don't know about you, but I feel better. I don't know about you, but I feel like I, I feel like we, I kept, I, I kept this whole this last twenty minutes. My mind was just on a ribeye steak. I, I just, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big <laughs> but you know, in this word, boy, you just feel like it's, it's just, you feel like you got something here. You know, you got, you got a prime rib here with some horseradish sauce. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> but I, I, this was rich. This was some rich word here. I mean, this, this word was rich. So we took over four. I don't know if anybody has any comments, but I tell you, I just feel good. I might actually go have me a steak, Daryl. I got a, uh, some, some, uh, a little piece of prime rib that I hid from everybody. A prime rib, not a ribeye that I hid from everybody else. So me and my wife. There you go. Might, you uh, go. might have some, uh, <laughs> might have some not rib. Yeah. More. I hid it for them. So, <laughs> but uh, we're going to open it for this just um, awesome word. If we get this, re yes, recorded. Amen. Let's get this out. Uh, but is any, anybody else got anything to say about this word tonight? Saints don't stop praying. For the Lord is nigh. Saints don't stop praying. Hear, hear your cry. The Lord has promised. Yes. Word is true. Saints don't stop praying. He will answer you. Thank you, Jesus. Saints don't stop, don't praying. stop praying. For the Lord is nigh. commend you to the grace of God. I pray that the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rests about with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.